Okay, so we finally have our first working web page for our uh, ESRM weather station, which is on the roof, two stories above us up there. And so these guys are going to tell us uh, what they, how they made this guy work. So right now it goes up to a Campbell Scientific data logger up there, and the data is all living there. The challenge has been how do we get that to students and to researchers and stuff. So what did you guys do? So uh, in order to get it outside of the school's network, since we weren't allowed to host the website internally, we had to use a Raspberry Pi to extract the information. And we just simply used that doing a web API call. And then in order to also make sure that you guys have an alert system so that if the weather array goes onto battery voltage and is not being charged. Which has happened before. <laughs> As you can see from right, right, right here. There you go. So if that happens, so you'll get an alert and Emily will be bugged every 10 minutes until that problem goes away. So that's about five days every 10 minutes. And uh, after that data is sent, it gets sent to an unlimited size database hosted on CI keys where this website will then be called in order to give you guys access to the information. And how do we use, how's, how are we using uh, Heroku on this? So the Heroku is the off-site web hosting service that we are using that's free to use. And because of the allotted free amount that you are given, it should not ever be overdone. And it's simply used by going to the requested domain, which is currently esrm.herokuapp.com, but is currently being transitioned to a more... Uh, Weather.esrm.zone, right? Correct, yeah. yes. And then on that page, you'll be able to see the current weather. So as of 2 p.m., that is the most recent uh, weather data. It'll be updated every half hour with that information. And then you will be able to then select, uh, this currently right now is all of the temperature, air temperature data that is in the database. So you can see how it references and you can go to each day. And as you zoom in on it, which you'll have full plotly um, tools, as you can see up in the top right, auto scale, zoom out and zoom in, as well as export to Plotly, as well as some basic statistical data. But if you wanted to look at other plots on the chart, you could say go to relative humidity, then you will be able to select a date range. So for example, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday May 2nd to Friday, May 5th, and then you'll be able to plot. And after a short amount of time, the information will then be plotted and you'll be able to get it up to half hour. And the date range is scaled appropriately to how much data exists in the database. If you don't like this interface, you can, you can download the data itself or you could actually go right into Plotly directly and then So and yeah, it. so it works real nicely. You can click export to Plotly and it'll take you to your Plotly. You don't even have to be signed in but you will be able to save it and you can do anything you want, such as going to where is the analytics? There's analytics on here as well. Analysis, there we go. And you'll be able to pull up, create analysis, add analysis, descriptive analytics, do it on the y-axis, run descriptives, you get n, min, max, mean, quartile, median, standard deviation, variance, error, etc. for your use. Now, if you wanted just the plain CSV data, you will get all the information from that data range just by clicking on there. This will open up a simple CSV file, which contains all the stuff that is required. Cool. And then, if you were to, then there's also this last one at the end, so for whatever reason, if you wanted all the information in the database, you would click right there. Cool. And so, uh, how, how much time did it take you guys to put this together? It, much trial and error and much, much, <laughs> much networking uh, security things, but overall, how long did it take you guys to, to write all this? About a full semester. Yeah, well, most of the bulk of the code was done in about two months, but it was a lot of trial and error, especially with the networking. Mm -hmm. And then uh, getting the, the, the two biggest hurdles were networking and then also figuring out how to get the Plotly API to work offline. And mm -hmm. finding a web hosting for a Python related um, yeah. Not for some reason, CI Keys doesn't work with Python well, and that kind of threw us for a loop trying to find another host server. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I also at the bottom of the page you have resources for Caligus Creek and Caligus Creek, Ventura County Station, and Government Weather Data for Camarillo. So it'll take you to those web pages for your own use. Cool. And that was that's it. It's very basics, uh, simple to use. Can't really. Uh, can't really go wrong. Cool. All right. So the ESRM weather station is finally up online. All right. Thanks, team.
Good job. Thank you. Woo, computer science <laughs> waving their flag in the SRM. Love it. 